Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Psalm 74 and verse 12 attest to the fact that deliverance or salvation that God for God is my king of all he says walking salvation in the midst of the earth God by his spirit is not just going around the earth supervising things and leaving them the way they are keep that scripture the Bible says he goes around the earth walking salvation from family to family, region to region, church to church, organization to organization, and he's about the business of walking salvation. Some versions will say walking deliverance in the midst of the earth. That means God is still working in my life. Is it not in your Bible that says God is at work? God is at work. He is at rest, but he's still at work by the Spirit of God. God is at work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God has the power to bring supernatural deliverance and restoration from any and all negative situations. From Genesis to Revelation, we see the manifest power of God on display, bringing nations, people, economies, health conditions to a place of restoration. There are many examples of this in the Bible. But in studying for this meeting tonight, my, my heart just went to four instances, four stories in the Bible that demonstrate so graphically the power of God to deliver men from calamities. Number one is the story of Job. You just write, that's not where I'm going to, but I just want to use this as a background. The entire text of Job, when you read Job chapter 1 from 1, down to 11 then 12 to 20 we see a a whole capture of the tragedy of job the bible tells us he was a man in the land of us hallelujah that he was perfect and that that man was upright can you imagine that he feared god and eschewed that means departed from frowned at did not entertain evil and then the Bible lets us know till today there are all kinds of theological debates as to whether this is a parable or it actually happened, you know, and so on and so forth. And that, that's not the context of my discussion tonight. But one thing we know is that tragedy struck over the life of this man called Job. And the Bible says back to back, people continue to come back with results. His daughters had died. His sons followed, his animals, his cattle, his estate, everything went in a moment of time. And I like what the Bible says, that when Job looked at these things, he bowed himself to the earth and worshipped. Not bowed himself and complained, he fell upon the ground and worshipped. But the beautiful thing is that the deliverance of Job was also captured. 42 from verse 10 to 17. Perhaps we read that one. Look how beautiful the life of Job turned. When you, listen, if you read about all that came upon Job, you would never imagine that such a man could come out of that calamity. And Job turned, the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Who turned it? The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and the Lord gave Job twice like he's giving someone tonight as much as he had before. 11. Then came to him all his brethren and his sisters and they that had been of his acquaintance before and they did eat bread with him and bemoan him comforting him over the evil that the Lord had brought upon him and every man gave him a piece of money and an earring of gold. Next verse. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Joshua Selman. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You think I'll call your name? Not with this verse. I can do another verse, but not this one. The Lord blessed the later end of Joshua Selman more than his beginning. And then the Bible gives us the detail. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels. Don't worry about where it came from. The most important thing is that it arrived in his life. And a thousand yoke of oxen, my God, and a thousand she asses, uh huh. 13, we're reading to 17. He had also seven sons. This is the one that disturbs me. 
It's easy to find a goat and pull it to his house. But ladies and gentlemen, it takes nine months, medical science tells us, for one child to arrive. How that man who was left for dead with boils all over his body, keep that scripture, please. He had seven sons and three daughters, 14. The Bible says, and he called the name of the first Jemima and all of those names 15. We're ending at 17. And the Bible says, and in all the land where no woman, no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Verse 16. After this, you would think that we're old. Job lived a hundred and forty years. And saw his sons. And saw his son's sons, even four generations. This was the same man who once upon a time in that story, the wife said, why do you hold on to your integrity? Your case is over. Curse God and die. Let me prophesy to someone, in the name of Jesus, where you are right now is only a line in this volume of story God is writing in your life. It is only a line. Never conclude because God the Deliverer is showing up for you even tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's end verse 17. The Bible says, so Job died, being old and full of days. That God has the power to deliver men from calamity. I'm not aware of anyone who has gone that far in terms of express, experiencing tragedy as this man Job. When you lose things, you can get them back. But to lose children and then have others watch them grow and see your children's children. We don't know how long his calamity lasted. There is hope for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the man Hezekiah. The Bible talks to us that there was such a man, a king in fact, called Hezekiah. You find that in Isaiah chapter 38, 1 to 9. And then you read 16 to 20. Unfortunately, we may not have the time to read, but just write for reference 1 to 9. That Hezekiah was sick. This is what the story tells us. And the prophet comes to him and says, put your house in order. You will not recover. He thanks the prophet and turns his face to the wall. And then he begins to pray. Asking the Lord for mercy. Hallelujah. And then the Lord responded to him in verse 4. Let's look at verse 4 to 6. God hearkened to his prayer, Isaiah 38. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. So God hears prayers, he sees tears, including the ones you cried. He hears prayers and he sees tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years, final verse, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. This man wrote a very beautiful rendition as a testament. Let's look at verse 16, 16 to 20. This is Hezekiah now. O oh Lord, by these things men live, he says, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So will thou recover me and make me to live? Follow carefully now. Behold, he says, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love in my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. Uh -huh. We're reading to 20. For the grave cannot praise thee. The grave cannot praise thee. Perhaps this may be a prayer point for someone this night. And you're saying, Lord, this medical report, the grave, if I die now, the grave cannot praise thee. He said, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. 19. The living, the living, he says, he shall praise thee. Only those who are alive. As I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. Final verse, it says, the Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my song to the stringed instrument all the days of our life in the house of God. Say amen. amen. So we see that tragedy came upon Hezekiah even unto death, confirmed by a genuine prophet. But God the deliverer took him out of that calamity. Ready for the third example? The man Jonah. Very interesting story because this one was a prophet himself. 
Jonah chapter 1, you find that from verse 1 to 8. The Lord sent Jonah to go and bring a word of caution leading to repentance over Nineveh. And the Bible says Jonah in anger ran, boarded a ship and was on his way through Joppa going to Tarshish. Hallelujah. And then the Bible tells us that trouble struck and while trouble struck, the people were dying, losing their things and the man was at the side of the ship sleeping. They casted lots and it fell upon him and said, who are you? Where do you come from? Who are your people? You have brought this evil upon us. And he said, well, I am a Hebrew. The moment he told them I am a Hebrew, they became afraid because they said, what, what, are you, what have you come to do now? What is the solution? And then he told them, look, if you need me to give you a solution, throw me out of this place. And then they threw him out. When you go to verse 15, you find a very interesting rendition there. They threw him out and the Bible says they cast him into the sea and immediately the sea ceased from raging. Now Jonah is in the belly of the fish and all of the story that happened there, very, very interesting story. The Bible says there was a prayer that Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, from basic biology you know that if and when you are being swallowed... There are many kinds of reactions that happen that, are we together now? But Jonah said, I may not move. I don't know how to lift my hands. I don't know how to stretch my body. But the one thing that you have the ability to do, even in the midst of storm, is to pray. There is no guarantee that you have the liberty of mobility in the midst of storms. There are times you are constrained. In the belly of the fish, there's only so much you can do. But the Bible tells us that Jonah prayed and he prayed a very serious prayer. And after he was done praying, my Bible, your Bible says, I think that should be verse 10. And the Bible says, the Lord spoke to the fish. The Lord spoke to the financial situation. The Lord spoke to your health condition. The Bible never said the Lord spoke to Jonah. God can speak to things, people, conditions. That's what makes him the Lord. The Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out upon dry ground. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. I may not have the power to speak to that situation by myself, but the Lord, the Lord sustains the power to speak to anything and they obey him. Are we together now? They said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Jonah was delivered. He saw the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Very mighty manifestation. Number four, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You find that in Daniel chapter 3, the Bible says Nebuchadnezzar built a 90 feet stature, pure gold, and he gave an injunction that at the sound of the instruments of music, everyone would bow to his image. And three Hebrew boys came up and said, Oh, King, we respect you. We are taught to honor. But as touching this matter, we will not be careful to speak. Our God will deliver us, they said. But that even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. The king said, All right, you made your choice. And they caused the furnace to be seven times hotter. Watch this now. I hope you know that was not a parable. It actually happened one day on earth. To the point that those who threw them were burned by the fire. As soon as they got in there, the king was amazed. He saw them moving without their hands and feet bound. And he said the appearance of the fourth was like the son of God. As a result, go to 28. Watch their deliverance now. The king made a very profound decree as a result of that. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. As a result, 29. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of these gentlemen shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Then he says, because there is no other that can deliver after this sort. 30. You would think the king would stop there. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. 
these four stories reveal very clearly that calamities and tragedies are real but that the power of God to bring supernatural deliverance, restoration from negative situations, from tragedies and calamities is equally real. In fact, in greater dimensions. Let's define very quickly what a calamity is. I thought to just guide our understanding with this definition. I found a very interesting definition and I put a few together. I hope it helps. Write this down, please. A calamity is defined as a great misfortune. A great misfortune or disaster. A calamity is first and foremost defined as a great misfortune or disaster. Number two, it is defined as an event marked by great loss, distress, and suffering. An event marked by great loss, distress, and suffering. Let me repeat myself one more time. That a calamity is defined as a great misfortune or disaster and then it is also an event any event whatsoever marked by great loss great distress and great sufferings so any event that eventually leads to losses loss of time loss of things loss of lives loss of opportunity loss of people loss of destiny qualifies to be called a tragedy, a calamity. Hallelujah. Now, the central point of my teaching tonight, and I believe this is where the Lord laid it very strongly upon my heart. I want to give you a rundown by the Spirit, which is really where the deliverance starts from tonight. Please lend me your attention. There are causes of calamities, losses, and tragedies. You need to know there are things men do in the spirit and even physically that can translate to a loss, a tragedy, and calamity. There are physical things that people do, but there are things people do in the spirit. Watch this, please. When Job's wife told him, curse God and die, what did she mean? How do you curse God and die? What do you say or what do you do? Because everything we know, men had said it and they did not die. So what, what, what formula can a man use to say something to God that leads to death immediately? Job knew how to do it. The wife knew how to do it. Curse God, he says, and die. How about King Herod? There were things that King Herod did and fell immediately and died. Worms came out of his body immediately. There were things that Ananias and Sapphira, are we Bible students? They did that made them to fall immediately. These things are captured in the Bible. I'm saying this because there are many people who have put together negative principles without knowing and they became victims. There are things that when you do in the spirit, there are things when you do upon the earth, it will translate to losses, calamities, and tragedies. Now, whether you know it or not, if I hold a gun, not knowing it is a gun, and point it at myself or someone, not knowing, let's assume it's a child, the gun will not refuse to shoot because it's a child holding it. Are we together? And that child may shoot that gun, become the first victim, and anybody else can die. The gun was designed to respond to whoever operates it, knowingly or unknowingly. The gun does not have the ability to distinguish ignorance, childishness, or adulthood. Whoever triggers it. Mm. And there are many people who have triggered spiritual laws. Listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. There are many families in their statements, while they were saying things, doing things, they were putting together a code in the spirit, giving the realm of the spirit an instruction. Bring loss to our family. Bring tragedy to our family. It is true. Hmm. Hallelujah. There are things men say to God. There are things men say to men. There are things men say to creation that must have an effect immediately. Creation will respond in a way that you may not know. Now, demon spirits know this. Occultists know this. When they want to destroy an individual, they don't come to his house to destroy him. They say things and program the spirit and send it to the man. Hmm. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. He cause God and die. Not cause God and leave. Only God knows what someone has said that the realm of the spirit took as an instruction. All of a sudden your finances went down. You helped demon spirits when they came. The job was already done. There was absolutely nothing to do. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, many of you will begin to shed tears because you say, so this is what I've been doing to myself, to my family. The realm of the spirit is alive and it has remained obedient from creation till today. Hallelujah. Hmm. The prophet speaks to the earth and says, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Do you know that what you call earthquake was a punishment for people who did not listen? And the ground opened. Is it not in your Bible? What did they tell the ground? That means the ground is a living thing. There is something you can tell it. It will open up. What did Moses tell the sea that make it, made it move obediently and became a wall? Science does not agree with that, but it happened. What did God tell the earth? That the water from the earth became restless until it covered the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not understand the laws of the spirit, you will say things and do things and you will just think sometimes you are making costly statements whereas you are reprogramming things. My assignment tonight is as a prophetic midwife because there are many of you, the things that you have said, the things you have programmed, if help does not come for you, you will keep receiving physical disasters and not know what it is. There was a woman who laughed at a man who was praising God. The Bible says God saw what she did. She did not know that mocking a man praising God was activating barrenness in the spirit. The Bible says she died barren. He never cursed her. She never cursed herself. But something happened. You can pick a computer and start hitting it, typing all kinds of things and pressing it. And in the midst of your confusion, the computer is trying to make sense of the language it hopes you are speaking to it. There are times you can press some things and then it starts continuing. Because as far as the computer is, com is, is, is concerned, you gave it a command that it must obey. Ah, when the Bible says, order my steps, you go and find out what that means. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to learn? There are causes. When they saw a man, listen, the disciples who were mentored by Jesus himself, they saw a man who was born blind. Watch what they asked Jesus. They never said, why is they said, who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it him? And if it's not him, was it his father? Who taught them? Jesus said, neither. That is not the only condition. There are other conditions. Did you ever read the scripture that says, say not before an angel I made a mistake? Because your assignment is to execute the speakings of the saints. Why do men, what causes tragedies, losses and calamities? Are you ready? I pray in the name of Jesus that God will open your eyes as I give you these keys. Number one, the first reason why calamities befall men, the first reason why tragedies come upon men is the absence or the lack of discernment. The absence or the lack of discernment. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, he says, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Watch this. It says, less at any time we let them sleep. Lack of discernment. There are people today, with all due respect, if they had discernment, they would not have jumped into certain vehicles. If they had discernment, they would have known that these people you see are arm robbers. If they had discernment, see, the end time will demand that your sensitivity is acute and strong if you must survive today's days. Because Satan can translate himself as an angel of light. Is someone learning? Lack of discernment. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. 
Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Watch this. It says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass the master's script. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. Lack of discernment. There are many people today who have gotten in trouble because they lacked discernment. Oh, they could not discern that this is not just malaria. That in one week, everybody began to be sick. That something, this is not just malaria happening. This is the devil trying to bring, raise his ugly head. And that it will take more than a medical attention. There are people who did not discern when the Spirit of God was telling them, start fasting. Give yourself to three days fast. And sometimes God will not tell you why. Yours is to obey. It's in the place of obedience that more revelation comes. Discernment. Discernment. Sometimes God can give you a job that may not make sense, but within that job is what connects you to the next level. The absence of discernment. One of the proof of a matured believer is that you have trained your faculty to be able to discern things. Discern things. Lack of discernment. The absence of discernment. Acts chapter 28 verse 27. Acts chapter 28. The Bible says, For the heart of these people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. They are being converted and they are being healed. Depends on the ability to have their eyes opened and their ears opened. Please lay your hands on your head and say in the name of Jesus, the grace for discernment. I receive it right now. Discernment. Discerning opportunities, discerning moments, discerning evil when it is forming, that I will not allow evil form before my eyes and then destroy me, making me a victim of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I obtain grace, grace, the ability to discern. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From scripture, there are only two principal ways to build discernment. Number one, the knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture. And number two, praying in the spirit. These are the two principal ways that the saints build discernment. You don't wish discernment. Number one, the knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture. If you do not know how God works, the devil will act in a way making you believe this is God until it destroys you. The knowledge of the ways of God as revealed in scripture. And then number two, praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit helps the saints to build capacity to discern. Capacity to discern. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second cause of calamities, tragedies, and losses? Are you ready? Carelessness. As simple as this sounds, don't assume you think you know what I'm saying. Just pay attention. Carelessness. Hebrews 2 and verse 3. Carelessness. Carelessness. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. Let's read together. Ready? One to read, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Hold on. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There are many, many believers who are careless with their lives careless with everything around their lives they take life they take god they take things for granted whatever would be would be careless with their prayer life careless with their word study life careless with their commitment in the house of god and they magically believe that tragedy will find its way of being exempted from their lives listen your possibilities in this kingdom happen to the degree to which you engage the forces of victory being at ease and allowing things to run themselves is like kicking a car and then just firing and allowing it to drive itself you will most likely end in a ditch i want to show you a scripture 
I think I've shared that scripture here. But it's blessed my life. It became a warning. A warning to my life about the tragedy of carelessness. Are you ready? Judges chapter 11. Let's go to verse 30. Judges 11, 30. 3, 0. Judges chapter 11, 30. This is the story of a man called Jephthah. Jephthah was a great man. He was a warrior. But he was one man who was careless. And let's learn from the effect of his carelessness. Are you ready? And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord. Watch this. And said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon unto my hands. Reading to 35. Then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth from the door of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, it shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it as a bond offering. Say carelessness. God did not ask him. God did not say give me anything. By himself, he tied this chain around his destiny. Carelessness. So Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. 33. He smote them from all those regions, 20 cities, all to the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Now, when Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house, and behold, guess who was the first person who came to greet her father? His daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. This innocent girl came to celebrate her father from returning back as a warrior. But she did not know that the father had used his carelessness to program her death. Did she hurt him? No. Did she insult him? No. Was she a witch? No. An innocent, well-behaved girl who looked forward to the coming of her father. Perhaps she also prayed her own prayer. Lord, bring my daddy home safely. Not knowing that before daddy left, he used his mouth carelessly. How many parents have programmed evil over the destinies of their children? Just because you love your child does not mean your child will be free. Carelessness can make good people to behave like evil people. Watch this. She came to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her, he did not have a son or daughter. And Jephthah, 35. And it came to pass when he saw her. What happened? He rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Was it her fault? And thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I cannot go back. Hmm. Lord, if I arrive Koinonia safely, all my five houses I will give you. I will give you my firstborn, he must serve. I will give you my salary. I will even leave my job. And God says, I did not ask you. I am not an evil God. Carelessness has brought trouble on many people. There are people who vowed vows they had no business vowing. They made careless things because statements because of emotions and at the end of it they did not know that all of these things have conditions when you honor them and have conditions when you violate them hallelujah praise the name of the lord many people make all kinds of statements lord in the name of jesus if this one happens, if I don't give my car, kill me. Kill my generation. Kill the ones they give birth to. And they just believe they have just spoken to the realm of the spirit. It was carelessness that made those who wanted Herod to release Barabbas. You know what they said? They said, let his blood be on our heads and upon our children. You can curse yourself, but why bring your children as part of it? Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? Many believers have put themselves in very troubling and disturbing circumstances today because of carelessness. They have made commitments that have brought financial losses. Out of emotions, they just got up and pledged on behalf of myself and my wife. And the wife is saying, we did not discuss this. I hereby bring five billion for the building of this building. 
they now give you a placard and snap it and put it on social media and keep texting you every day we are waiting even one billion you've not given and now your reputation is at stake can i tell you the truth it is wise to not be hasty in speaking or doing one of the proof that you are matured is to understand the gravity of what you are saying or doing everybody say carelessness carelessness in driving there are people who drive almost at 100 and whatever provided the car is moving they fire even if there is a traffic light in front of them and then something happens when you have two mad men like that you will most likely have an accident are we together carelessness there are people who take things for granted they have a problem seen in the night and they want to drive from everywhere to everywhere you see, before we begin to blame demons, I told you demons are opportunists. There are times that they don't even need to do anything. The carelessness of the saints has already assisted in accomplishing whatever it is that the devil intended to do. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some of you because of carelessness, with all due respect, you see gatherings in the night. And you say, I want to go and find out. You are not a police officer. You are not a law enforcement agent. It's none of your business. Your relatives are not there. Carelessness. And you get up and you do not know that these are people who are already plotting how to go and boggle a home. And just when you arrive there, the police arrive too. They pack all of you. May God deliver you from evil. Say amen. How about people who drive knowing that their tire pressure is bad they will still drive their exhaust is dragging on the ground they will still drive petrol or their gas is leaking from the car they will still drive and carry passengers have you seen those kinds of things and some of you enter the car The man made a vow and said, if you give me victory, the first thing that comes out of my house, only God knows how long he waited to have that one daughter. And this young lady comes out with timbrel dancing and saying, daddy, welcome. Do you know that he ended up sacrificing her? Now, will you call that man a murderer? Yes and no. Because no, being that he's a good man, but who killed her? There are many people who got into trouble willingly. They got up and got into trouble willingly. I'm saying this because there are many calamities in our lives that if only we had discernment and then obtain grace to be free from a life of carelessness, financial carelessness. There are people who are in debt today. They collected a car that they didn't have money to pay borrowed somebody's car and crashed it like the axe head remember all kinds of things carelessness living beyond their means getting into all kinds of trouble and today they are in a situation that has brought calamity and pain upon their lives ladies and gentlemen believers are taught by the spirit to become wise people and part of wisdom is to be able to live your life with discretion not to get up and get into trouble jesus was teaching us to pray and he said deliver us from evil that we ask him to deliver us from evil hallelujah number three why do people experience tragedies losses calamities ignorance ignorance Please don't assume you understand this. Ignorance. Ignorance of the laws of the spirit. Ignorance of the laws of destiny. Ignorance. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. People get into trouble because of ignorance. They say things. They do things. The Bible says also that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. That a soul should be without knowledge, it is not good. And that he that hasted, you are in a hurry because of ignorance. You will sin against yourself. 
Please say ignorance. Many believers do not understand that there are laws. For instance, the law of honor. For instance, the law of diligence. These are laws. For instance, the law of seed time and harvest. Ignorance of these laws does not exempt you for the, from the consequences of not obeying them. The Bible says, he that considers the wind, is that in your Bible? He will not sow and as a result he will beg in harvest. Whether you are a sincere person or not, in our world today, if you did not farm or you did not prepare for the days where the rainy season is gone, you will beg. It's in the Bible. So being ignorant does not exempt you from the consequences of violating those laws. There are many laws that I've taught you here. The law of honor, the laws that control favor, the law of competence, all of these things, they are laws. And if you do not have an understanding of them, ladies and gentlemen, you will program calamity. For instance, a man, I hope you know that prayerlessness is officially authorizing evil to plague your life. Did you know that? That when a believer does not commit himself perpetually to pray, eventually you will put yourself in a position where you become a victim of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Prayerlessness. How about wordlessness? Not having access to the word of God. ignorance. Believers must be dis delivered from the plague of ignorance. Many people will tell you they do not know and they get into all kinds of trouble. Why are you like this? I do not know. You do not know that there are curses and yokes. You do not know that you came from a family where nobody has lived be before, you know, lived above 50 years. Just because you do not know does not stop the curses and the altars from working. It will take your ability, watch this, your ability to get out of ignorance into a point of knowledge and then obtain grace to engage that which establishes your liberty. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, we did not even know Christ went ahead to die for us. Imagine if everyone had to discover by himself and then personally ask for a savior. You see why it is called so great a salvation? Because we did not ask for it. I have watched and I tell you this with all due respect. I have watched people violate the laws of the spirit perpetually. I have watched people violate the laws of increase, the laws of greatness, the laws of advancement. I have watched people violate these laws perpetually, sometimes to their detriment. The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7. I have said, verse 6, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. If you do not know that what you are seeing is acid, consecrated acid, and you go and put your hands there thinking it is water or kerosene, will it pity you and say, okay, I, I, you are exempted? I'm acid. Next time, just be careful. As you put your hand there, sometimes you may not live to tell the story. Many people have gotten themselves through ignorance. They have ventured into things they did not understand. Some in ignorance, they just went to the village and got angry and entered a shrine. Removed everything there and said, we're tired of this nonsense. Bulldozer, come and bring this thing out. And while they were saying, they saw women crying and they did not know why. They were already crying. And the person said, God, let the spirits come to me. And then they left. And, and sometimes even believers who do not understand the dynamics of enforcing liberty, they just blindly went and said, don't worry, everything is done in Christ. And then they do, and nobody talks. You go back home, the first thing that disappears is your car key, your wallet, everything disappears. And then you sleep, and then only part of you wakes up. At the end of it, and the person will be shouting, in Jesus' name, God, you cannot fail me. In Jesus' name, I trusted you. It's ignorance. 
Hallelujah. Just because you are saying in Jesus' name and you are calling the right Jesus does not mean things will just happen. There are rules of engagement. Are you, are you listening now? This is very important. Ignorance. Even physically, there are those who did not choose their battles. They went to go and fight institutions that are bigger than them. They went to go and fight people. Listen to what I'm telling you. Across nations, there are nations that may be weak and just get up to go and fight people greater than them. The nation of Israel, every time they were going to fight a people bigger than them, they will consult with God. Three kings have come together against us. And sometimes Africa, with all due respect, sometimes we don't walk with wisdom, we just get up carelessly. There are individuals who just step in and say, in this office, I'm tired of this manager. I'm a child of God. I'm tired of oppression. And the man is quiet and watching you while you are done. And immediately he's done. He says, secretary, just give him the letter. Okay, we appreciate you. You can leave. He said, no, I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to complain. You can leave. And the person who is complaining like that, you would have calculated that what if I lose the job? While you were arguing and insulting the man who feeds you every day, you forgot you have five children and four relatives. Now they've driven you out. And in two days, your life has become miserable. Ignorance. Are we together? There are certain people you cannot cast out of your life. I've taught you this. They are not castable. You only pray for favor so you pass through their gates. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How do you cast Pharaoh because you want to come out of the prison? You will remain there because the Pharaoh is the leader over Egypt. If you want to come out of the prison, you don't pray that God will cast him. You pray that you'll find favor with Pharaoh. Let him send for you to interpret his dream for God's sake so you can get out of that dungeon. Is someone learning? Careless, ignorance. Let me give you number four, my God. This number four is going to be a very strong, very strong one for someone. Misuse and abuse. The fourth reason why calamities befall men. This is an instruction that God gave me to teach this. Misuse and abuse misuse and abuse misuse and abuse it was dr miles monroe of late who said when the purpose of a thing is not known abuse the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use many people have abused opportunities they have abused doors relationships to their detriment today misuse and abuse please pay attention many families today are suffering because of this abuse and misuse it was true with the prodigal son it was true with the sons of Eli remember the sons of Eli Hophni and Phinehas abuse and misuse will always bring depletion as I was meditating on this it really dawned on me how true this thing is abuse and misuse do you know I submit to you there are many families today with all due respect who should never be begging for food to eat with the kind of people that God brought to their lives but they abuse privileges are we together yeah the manager gave you one of his car and said be driving abuse misuse gave you a house you did not pay for be staying there abuse and misuse gave you an opportunity gave you his ATM card and said help yourself you return back with a bill of over 1 million abuse and misuse people go to the restaurant and they say just eat anything and they say hmm, this this is my opportunity abuse and misuse please listen and learn Many people today have abuse opportunities. My uncle is saying, the moment you see that you are surrounded by great people but not affected by their greatness, there is abuse somewhere. There is misuse somewhere. Are we together now? Yeah. There are people who have abused relationships with men of God, abused relationships with their pastors, abused relationships with their leaders. Oh, it looks like my pastor likes me specially. He doesn't seem to rebuke me when I'm wrong. 
abuse, misuse. Someone is sleeping or resting and you call him by 12 and 1 and say, please, can I have 30 minutes discussion with you? Because I donated 1 million to the church or 2 million to the church and you see, pastors, business people, there are those today who probably would never have gotten to certain offices but maybe by leverage and they got there. And the next thing, they would just call the director of the company and say, you don't know me. I heard when you were dictating your number to the other person. Wow, I'm amazed. You even picked my call, sir. You are a very great man. I've seen your face around the paper. And the man said, who is this? And cuts that call. And because of that, you and all who are connected to you suffer indefinitely. Abuse. Listen and learn, please. Many people have abused their relationships with God. Because God is merciful and compassionate. Many people have abused their relationships with men. Many people have abused the laws of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I've made it as a point of duty that anything God gives me that is valuable to my destiny. Number one, I will never become familiar with God, his presence, his people. Number two, I will make sure that anything that is an advantage in my life is worth my protecting. Did you hear what I said? Anything at all. If this phone is useful to me, then I must protect it. If this Bible is useful to me, I must protect it. If my spiritual life is useful to me, I must protect it. Abuse and misuse. So many people, sadly, including our loved ones, will tell you, you know, this guy on the TV, do you know that this was my friend? Do you know that we used to eat in the same plate? What changed and what happened? Abuse and misuse. Hallelujah. Abuse and misuse. Oh, remember we were classmates in primary school. I hear you're a director now. Ah, ah. Oh boy, let me give you five. The, the, the classmate then is not your mate now. You call it classmate. Are we together now? Very bad manners that you see people exhibit and they miss out on many things. They believe every president in every nation was their classmate and their friend. And because of that, they want to just bounce into maybe Aso Rock or anywhere. Unfortunately, yesterday is not today. You must learn to adjust yourself to the reality of the moment. Are we together now? Yes. Abuse and misuse. There are many people who have carried entitlement mentality and destroyed their lives, destroyed everything. God has granted me the honor and the privilege of access and relationship with some of our fathers and I vowed before the Lord that I will never abuse that privilege. Never. Never abuse that privilege. Can I tell you, every time you are around a great man, a great system, be careful because the tendency for abuse is closed. Have you seen people like that? Children abuse their relationships with their parents. This great man is my father. And when they get to points where they are teenagers and the rest, when he's giving warnings and talking to other people, they exempt themselves. After all, he's my father. Is the reason why the parents will leave an inheritance for the house helps, not the children. Every time I approach God, I don't approach God as a man of God. I don't approach God as Apostle Joshua Selman. No, I am still that boy that you have found. I have come with humility of heart. Correct me, build me. And God says, I've lifted you like this and you are still like this. Let's go to the next level. For someone, God is giving you a secret. Why many great people have left you. Why you are alone. You are not rising and they are not helping you rise. Abuse. You have abused privileges. Two businessmen will sit down and be discussing, for instance, transactions worth billions. And because you happen to be the caterer, you are listening to a discussion you have no business listening to. And in two days, you have called everybody. Wow! So this man has money like this. I have, there are things I know. And that abuse closes doors in the secret and in the open. Drivers have lost opportunity. All they have done was to drive great people for years with all due respect. And they never received anything because they feel I know this man. All his conversations, all his transactions... 
How about house helps and all of these people? I'm the person washing his clothes. I'm the person doing all of these things. I want you to kill the cancer of familiarity from your life. Please believe me. I know what I'm saying. The moment you become too familiar with people, oh, Olu of Warrior and his wife, let's, let's honor them. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yeah. The moment you put yourself in a position where you abuse and you misuse opportunities, that door closes forever. My question is, what door opened before that is now closed? I can tell you there was an abuse and there was a misuse. Hallelujah. The man promised you that you always pay your school fees. You just call or you send a text. Sir, it's time oh, send. You see that? What does he say? It's time. That's how you announce to someone who is doing what probably your loved ones could not do. How much is the school fees? 2.5 million. And you are telling him it's time. Oh. Something you may not be able to raise in one decade of your life. Every time God puts people around your life to show you unusual kindness, don't act as if it is something you would have been able to do. Are you learning now? God grants me grace I cannot give myself. I will roll on the ground and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I would not have done it by myself. Hallelujah. This man who has 20 cars, all that he gave me was one small golf to start moving around Abuja with. You mean this, this man? What is there? I've seen him buy things for strangers. And me, I'm his direct father's younger brothers, sisters. All, all that is stories. Nobody owes you anything, let me tell you. Get used to it immediately. No. Everything done is an act of kindness. And if you don't appreciate it, life, will, you will recycle your pain again and again. Hallelujah. With all due respect, and, and I say this with every sense of humility, there, 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 I tell you sincerely, there are people whose calls and text messages I don't even respond to. I've never known them. I don't know them. Your first approach, you need me desperately and you need me at your terms. You are joking. I'm anointed and humble but not stupid. Humility is not stupidity. Are we together? Oh, don't send me a text and say meet me so so place or see me who do you think you are what do you have politician how many years no come on are we together don't do that I'm teaching you many people are it's not like God cannot bring you out of calamities most of us have not learned we don't understand honor we abuse and we misuse relationships to our detriment. We abuse and we misuse things. Someone gives you his car to travel with. You promise to return it after two days. And before you know it with that car, the first shock is that the car is all over social media. Come and see what God has done. And the owner of the car is saying, what in the world is happening here? The second shock is that you veer off and go somewhere else. The third shock is that you return the car. You don't even have the wisdom to fuel it, to say thank you or wash it. You return it with the mud from your village and pack it and drop the key. And then you are not even there to say thank you physically. I know this is hard, but just I love you. Just listen to me. I'm teaching you how to come out of calamities. Hallelujah. Oh, do you know that I met... Um, I met um, Daddy Gio. I'm telling you. I shook him. I even touched his shoulder. And then I met Bishop Oedeko. I mean, these guys are not, I, I, there's nothing special about them. Oh, can you imagine? And while you are saying that the realm of the spirit is hearing you, that means you have closed the door to that realm of greatness. They don't have to speak against you. I'm telling you, this is how it works. Every dimension of greatness in the kingdom has a grace that takes men there. And the moment you dishonor the men, you also dishonor the grace that lifts men there. Are we together? This ordinary pastor, what is there? I'm sure that this pastor's wow, he's just, just lucky. And then you now say, Father, grant me grace. It will not happen. God is not a... No. Say, Father. One more time, say, Father. I obtain grace to not abuse and misuse opportunities Amen. hallelujah 
for some maybe you received an opportunity someone called you and said there is an offer for a job are you interested 400,000, 500,000. Wow, that's a great testimony. Okay, apply very quickly. I'll wait in my office for you. And the person is watching a movie forever. Ah, I forgot, you know. And the person has been praying and fasting. God, give me a job. Here is someone trying to risk his or her reputation and you do not mind. And he says, is it that nothing can be done? And by next week, you go around saying, all these people don't help. Church people don't help. And they say, but I waited for you. Let me teach you three ways to protect everything God gives you. Three ways. Are you learning? Number one, pray. One of the ways you keep anything God gives you is to pray for it. Opportunities. If I don't pray for koinonia, it is because I am not willing, I'm not placing value on what God has given. Pray. Relationships, pray. Resources, pray. People, pray pray number two I taught you last week let me repeat gratitude you protect anything and you avoid abuse by learning gratitude number three become an active contributor to that overall process whether it is men whether it's principles hallelujah a great man gives you two million to go and start a business let me teach you what to do Take 50,000 out of that 2 million and buy, even if it is um, a pack of wine, go back and tell the person, thank you. Are we together now? Yes. Go and say thank you. Say it again. Say it again. You will schedule seasons of grace beyond your imagination. I'm telling you this. There are things you may not ask for that the people will now say, what else can I do for you? Is someone learning? Yeah. And then there are moments in your lives, let me teach you, for no reason, reach them and say thank you. Don't just say thank you at the point where kindness was shown. For no reason. Wake up one morning, wake up one night. Senator, sir, I just want to say thank you. It's one year since I got this job and... I know that it was by God, but it came through you. I want to say thank you for your thoughtfulness. The day you now hear that, God forbid, Senator's mother goes to be with the Lord. Make sure your text is also there to say thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I heard that this has happened, this has happened. I may not be in the position to comfort you, but just to let you know that we are, you are in our prayers. Will he reply? No. But did he see it? Yes. Is someone learning? Yeah. Abuse and misuse. God granted you grace. You did not pray for one month, yet doors kept opening because God forced somebody to lose sleep, to keep interceding for you while you discover it. You abuse the opportunity. There are many people who don't pray. They say, ah, Koinonia is a powerful ministry. You don't worry. You've not gone to our prayer department, that's why. You've not seen apostle pray, that's why. And God says, there are things that only your understanding can bring you establishment of those victories. But abuse and misuse. I'm praying for somebody here. Whatever opportunity you have abused, whatever resources God gave you, men gave you. Some of you here, listen, before I even pray for you, this just came to my spirit. Please sit down before I pray for you. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people here. He once opened doors of financial resources. It was abuse. You were not yet established, yet a false life, trying to be a big man, a big woman. Hallelujah. And you plunge yourself. What God gave you was a seed. You didn't plant it. You ate your seed. In the kingdom, we don't eat seeds. When you eat seeds, you rob the ground of an opportunity to bring more. Hallelujah. Abuse. Maybe you are a man of God. One day God opened up doors for you and you were in the midst of men of God where sincerely, based on your level of work, you should not be there. You abuse the opportunity. Everybody there was greater than you, both in the spirit and by the experience of ministry. But all you were concerned about was snapping with every father, not receiving the graces they carried. Oh, let them just know that I, I met Papa 
Adeboe, let them just know that I snapped with Papa Kumui and we use it to pride in ourselves. Can I tell you, every time God opens a door, don't use your hand to close it. There are some of you right now, after this service, you need to start building back certain bridges you have destroyed. Call that CEO woman. She may be temperous, but she has access to almost everybody within the economic space. Don't downplay that. It didn't come by luck. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Let me surprise you. Some of you need to call even your own parents and say, thank you, daddy. I was born from a rich family. I don't want to take it for granted. I've seen my contemporaries suffer, you may tell him, but thank you for having the grace to even be able to do this. There are many people who destroyed their lives before 11, before 12. Now you have granted me grace to have a smooth path to my destiny. As soon as I was born, by two years old, I was born again. By four, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. You made me a church girl or a church boy. And that's what has made me responsible. I am 22 now and I'm about to buy my own house. I want to say thank you. Don't abuse relationships. One day, take the time to send a text to any man of God who has changed your life. Don't keep receiving alone. Mm -mm. Thank you. I'm not saying this so you do anything for me. Or no, what I'm teaching you as a principle. Thank you, sir, for teaching the word. Thank you for doing all of that. Yeah. Are you learning? Abuse and misuse. And more importantly, some of you after this service, you need to go and kneel before God and say, who but you is able to lift me? I never imagined I'll be able to survive 2023 because I came into this year without a job. I still do not have a job. But look what your mercy has done in my life. The same trouble that plagued all of us. I came out, but my friends died. Thank you. And God says, in the midst of this world of ingratitude, you can do this to me. Let's go to the next level. God, I've been talking to you about this issue of marriage. Is it that I'm not beautiful? How did you create me? And God says, you will remain there in that kind of, with that kind of attitude. Thank you that I'm alive and sound and not in a rehab. The person in a rehab is not thinking marriage. The person in a rehab is thinking survival. How about some cancer patient with stage 4 cancer and they are still saying thank you Jesus. Can I tell you, we live in a world where always prides in seeing the things God has not done and you forget to see the things that he has done. Is someone learning tonight? This, I'm emphasizing this because it's one of the greatest reasons. Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, they had an opportunity and joined the immunity of priesthood to take some of the portions without looking at it. Whatever they brought out was their blessing. And this boy started checking to select carefully and God was watching. You see, let me tell you something. The consequences of abuse does not show immediately, but I assure you for as long as God lives, one day it will catch up with you. Hallelujah. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your faithfulness. How can I forget, Lord, your benefits? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your benefits. This is what I tell him. Oh, when I'm with him, I get down my knees and I say, my Lord and my maker, look at what you have done. May I never get to any place. I'm telling him now where I forget you. Can any man lift you when God has not lifted you? Can any door open for you when God has not authorized it? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. Let me not forget, Lord. 
your benefits I will never forget Lord your benefits he said bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name the question the Lord is asking you today is who has the power to help you and has refused to help you because of abuse and misuse have you abused opportunities have you abused relationships have you abused doors hallelujah praise the name of the Lord number five My glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. Remain my glory, the lifter up of my head. Try this, ladies and gentlemen. Use even if it's a few hours sometime this week and don't ask for anything. Just roll before the Lord. Find a way. Mention things. Mention people. Mention doors. Mention opportunities. You do this as an experiment and watch what happens to you. Forget about what you think he has not done, what men has, have not done, what is not yet there. Thank him for what has happened. Lord, I thank you for life. I recovered from this infirmity. You took away shame. Quarter to shame. My family would have been left as an object of shame and mockery. And look how you came in gallantly. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Are you ready for number five? The fifth reason why people experience calamities, tragedies, and losses is as a result of demonic and satanic attacks. Demonic and satanic attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is not a friend. He will kill everything he can kill. Destroy everything he can destroy. I assure you on that. Satan is ever determined to destroy every family. Destroy Koinonia, Joshua Selman, your family. Provided you are on earth more so that you name the name of Christ. You have drawn a line that it takes understanding and engaging the forces of victory to overcome. John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal look at this and to kill and to destroy this is satan's assignment when it comes to your life he will steal he will kill and he will destroy the same way God schedules men to give you opportunities. Satan is a robber. Ladies and gentlemen, let me list for you a few things that he steals. He steals years. He steals destinies. He steals relationships. He steals resources. He steals your convictions. He steals your discernment. Like I taught you two weeks ago, he steals your ability to see. There are thieves that when they come to your house, is your money, direct money. They don't have the time to carry rice, to carry beans, to carry yam. That's not part of what they are looking for. They need something they can take immediately, not Satan. When Satan steps into a life, he does not even spare anything. Your joy he will take. Your peace he will take. Your relationships he will take. Hallelujah. How do you know Satan has visited a man? Please listen to me. Because there will always be perpetual depletion decline pain losses tragedies satan for you 
Let Satan come into a home and you will see the best of couples loving Jesus and loving themselves for a silly, sometimes insignificant reason. Satan, the programmer for you, he will program tragedy and pain. You can see his signature. Every time he steps into a life, you will see a beautiful destiny. A young gentleman, a young lady serving the Lord with all their hearts and loving Jesus and let Satan be allowed to strike and you see everything will go down. He will replace beauty with ashes, joy with mourning. Everything goes down. Have you seen people with all due respect that you knew years, maybe years ago, and now you maybe you stumble across them and sometimes you have to hold yourself because of the shock. You almost want to say, what happened? How come you depleted like this? Looking as if you were left for dead. Where is the job? It's gone. That opportunity is gone. Where are your relatives? All gone. Where is your joy? It's gone. Are you still a child of God? I'm, I'm not sure. What has happened to you now? I'm depressed. Who caused it? My uncle. Wrong answer. Satan. Satan for you. He will come in and destroy people. Destroy whatever. You see a man of God who was vibrant, on fire, loving Jesus, commanding signs and wonders. And with all due respect, years later, no vibrancy, no fire is all gone. Where is your influence? He stole it. Your reputation? He stole it. Your integrity is gone. The name God gave you is gone. Listen, if you let Satan, he would destroy you. My assignment tonight is not just to announce this. There are some prayers who are going to pray in this place that everything Satan has stolen in the name that is above all names, I'm praying for you, it must be restored this night. Not next week, it must be restored this night. There are people, some of them listening to me now, once upon a time, you could build a house for people without thinking twice. Today, you can plead for 20,000 Naira. Your brain did not disappear. Satan visited you. Hallelujah. Once great, once blessed, once anointed, once upon a time, with all due respect, around the world, there are many vibrant people who used to serve the Lord with energy. If you hear that they are coming to town, or you hear that they are coming to a nation, I mean, you just have to pray that you are even able to reach there. But today they call on a nation and nobody answers. Can I tell you, the worst thing that can happen to a man is to once be in a position where God places you. And then in your lifetime, and also in the presence of those you raised, you go down. I forbid it over your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some of your parents, some of our parents, in their lifetime, they were blessed they loved Jesus. They had influence. Some of you saw people line up in your houses just to see your parents. But in old age, they are alone. Everybody, you had to change your surname because if you still use that name, it may program failure for you. Come on now. Satan for you. You have known the works of God. I think I was teaching for who now? I think it was, it was Bishop Adejumo. And I shared something in that meeting I still remember. There are things when you see you know is a man that has done it. There are things when you see you know it is God that has done it. But there are things when you see you know that this is Satan. Hallelujah. A man comes to meet you and say, young lady, I like you, you are a nice lady. Let me go and see your parents. And then Satan intercepts. And all of a sudden, doesn't pick the call again, doesn't do anything again. What happened? I had a dream and I saw that you were a witch. Come on now, Satan for you. I'm, I'm saying this because I'm going to pray for someone. Anything that has taken away your glory, any demonic thing that is bringing you to a point of shame, I call upon my God who is also your God. He must give way, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hallelujah. Please sit down.
with all due respect, there are people today perhaps they would have been appointed in certain great positions around the world. But just before the appointments get there, there were some Ahitophels who reached before them and said, do you know what? Don't lift this woman. Don't lift this man. And they have remained so. I made up my mind that that story once great will never be used in my life. No, that story once anointed, once impactful. But to, to keep that testimony, it takes more than a heart of integrity. You must know what to do with Satan. Hallelujah. You must know what to do with Satan. I once prayed for a lady, true story. This lady met me and she said, Apostle, you must pray for me. I think I'm possessed. I said, how do you just come and say you are possessed? She said, I don't understand. Everybody keeps having dreams that I'm either pursuing them or killing them. It's my face they keep seeing. More than, according to her, over 10 people in the church and then of course they will share with the church leaders and everybody just told them avoid this lady and some already had called her a witch a faithful worker in the church and she noticed that her leaders true story the leaders who avoid her everybody who avoid her because they go to bed and they see her face i can tell you that is a satanic manipulation because her destiny is around that vicinity and Satan may know that in her rising may be the rising of her family members. Satan is very calculative. He makes sure that what he attacks must create a ripple effect. Who can I touch in this family that will affect the 20 other people? Oh, you are the one. Then he comes. Do you know why you lost the job? It's not just an issue of incompetence. You better open your eyes and see that this was an attack. Because in your getting that job is the health, the nourishment, and the stability of every other person in your family. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. A dear woman one time reached me and she said, she gave birth to, according to her now, and I'm saying it because she had shared the testimony herself. She gave birth to a normal son, very fine, very normal son. And then I think about the age of three or four, he began to exhibit hyperactive, you know, he started behaving, you know, this and that. And they went to the hospital only to say that the boy was autistic. And she said, I never gave birth to an autistic child. This child was normal. This child was this and that. And they gave some drugs and she just felt that's all right. You see, carelessness again. That was a time to attack this thing with energy. No, let him just grow a while. And they found out that the thing was getting, he was becoming violent. And I said, Madam, you are not just a mother. You are not just a wife. You are a priest. If you ignore that duty, it is not only this child. Everything Satan does is not the only thing he wants to do. It's just the first thing he's doing. Did you hear what I said? Every attack Satan launches on your life is only part one. I assure you there is part two, three, four, and part infinity coming to the degree to which you allow him. But as for me, from onset, Shabakatapa, I don't have the time to waste. Immediately, Haprakatoskiata, not Koinonia, not Joshua Selman, the blood is upon this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Is someone learning now? This is where the place of spiritual intelligence comes. Learn to discern where, when Satan is around the vicinity. Negative things start happening. Someone who used to love you now hates you for no reason. Don't sit down saying my boss and finding flimsy excuses. He is not my tribe, that's why. They will soon drive you out of that place. Go and shut the door and say, I know. I know that when you grant favor, oh God, you grant favor completely in the name of Jesus. The spirit around my place of work that is making them antagonize me. I call the name of the God of Jeshuron and I curse you over this office. Hallelujah. There are preachers with all due respect that begin to see the movement of Satan around their ministries. Stories are flying around. Things are happening around. People are becoming rebellious, antagonistic. It is not a leadership problem alone. 
it is a spiritual problem. It means that Satan has discerned the impact of that organization, that ministry, and he's coming to scatter everything. Your assignment is to learn to hold on to the four horns of the altar and pray. In one week, you spent over one million treating mysterious sicknesses. Your husband became sick just when you were trying to help him. The children became sick. Then you hit your car somewhere and then the generator stops spoiling and then everything is happening and you find out you are getting angry without cause you can't pray you can't fast it's an attack it's not psychology it's an attack a once brilliant child now that you started paying school fees of say 1.5 million per term because of your passion to invest someone who used to be the brightest in the class now does not know he's about maybe the second to the last and you keep quiet and it keeps going down one time the school calls you and say we're sorry we may have to relieve you, your child. It is not your child's being dull. It is called the waster. There is something called the waster in scripture. Is someone learning? The waster. Demonic attacks are real. I assure you by God, demonic attacks are real. Satan attacks men. He attacks ministries. I told you that there are demons allocated over territories. There are spirits allocated over, you know, generally believers to stop the purposes of God. But there are spirits that are allocated. They follow mantles. They follow offices, not men. Whoever holds that office and holds that mantle will have to contend with that spirit. There are spirits that follow ministries, not men. So there is a widespread manifestation of certain disasters. How will you like to be part of a ministry that you hear that in one month, 25 people just died mysteriously? It will now make sense to say that, could it be that something is happening? And in, in, in peace, you will leave. That is Satan for you. I'm saying it again. In the name of Jesus, every attack, because some of you, you came to church tonight, you are in the middle of an inexplainable battle rising from left and center what is happening in my life God give me an explanation and I'm telling you that for many of you it is just an assault an attack from Satan now listen one one of the signature proof that Satan has visited you is your health listen listen this health you see I know that there are many doctors here and with all due respect, I honor and I respect you. We're having a training already for our medical practitioners. But can I tell you, with all humility, I've been in this business of ministry and the spirit life for a while. I know what Satan does. It is impossible for Satan to attack you and leave your health. It's a lie. How do you know? Mysterious manifestations, they first start small. He tests your capacity in the spirit and then you keep quiet. It's just continuous headache that comes every month. It's just, it's just some demonic thing. Um, help them please. I, I know that this thing, I'm just feeling serious pain. I went to the hospital and they said it's nothing. Um, it's, just a, it's just a mild bleeding situation. It, the, the doctor said he does not understand, but he's still there. I just know that every time I lie down, I see myself in a coffin somewhere and I wake up tired. My friend, get up from the strength of spiritual intelligence and begin to deal with that issue. Otherwise, you would destroy your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Know when it is just a medical situation and when spirits have participated with you. There are certain tiredness that is not because of the work you are doing. It's an attack from hell. Hallelujah. Heart pain, headache. And they tell you they found a tumor at the back of your head. How did it get there? We don't know. What is going to happen now? You need 10 million, 15 million, and you've saved just when you save to finally build a house. I tell you, it's an attack. Don't smile and say, it's all right. It's just part of these things. Hallelujah. It's good to eat well. Walk with what the doctors say. I eat well. I make sure I eat healthy. Don't be careless. But in addition to it, please come to terms with the fact that we live in a real world. And don't let Satan lie to you taking advantage of age. 
you are not the first person to be old. Refuse that thing that the older you are getting, the more you should deteriorate. I don't know about you, but I choose to reject it. No, as my days are, so shall my strength be. This is what my Bible teaches me. If you don't believe this, you will get into trouble. One day you will wake up, a young man, 30, 40 years, you stand up as if you are 80 years. Reject that spirit. It's like a part of me does not want to get up. No, everything God gave me must obey me. Everything. If it's part of my body must obey me. I wake up in the morning, my head you must wake up. My heart you wake up too. My respiratory system you must wake up. Speak to your body in one minute. In the name of Jesus I will not die. I challenge every health condition. You bow to the name of Jesus. My eyes will see till my days are done. My feet will walk till my days are done. My hands will reach till my days are done. Go ahead, take a minute and speak. No weakness, no limitation, strength in my body. I cause cancer, I cause fibroid. I cause prostate cancer. I cause eye condition, cataract, glaucoma. I cause you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe what you are doing? Satan attacks men. He attacked Jesus. He attacked the apostles. He attacks everything pro-God. He attacks everything pro-grace. He attacks everything pro-life. He attacks everything pro-destiny. He attacks everything pro-wisdom. Your assignment is to be on your guard and not let him take advantage of you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Your business was working well. But the day you said I would take 20% out of my business to fund the gospel and sponsor children, maybe young people who cannot make it. Satan said, what did you say? That Jesus will benefit from this business? All right, I'm on my way coming. Hallelujah. Someone wants to bless you. That's when they forget. Someone promises to lift you. That is when they forget. They vow calling the name of Jesus that this week you will smile. That is when they forget. It's your assignment to force them to remember. No, no, no. Listen, if you are a businessman here and things have not been working, please, when it's time to pray, I'm releasing my faith with you. Be serious and pray. Be serious and pray. Don't say my uncle was just made a commissioner or my uncle was just made a senator. The arm of flesh will fail you all. You need to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You go to bed and you see yourself in a grave. Wake up and close that grave. Wake up and close that grave. And curse the spirit that dug that grave. Hallelujah. Parents. Don't watch, you see what, I'm not scaring you, but you see the kind of disaster that is happening? Bless your children, speak over them. Declare that you go out and you come in. The Bible says you're going out and coming in. You will not go out and get missing. You go out and I expect you to come in. No one chance, no satanic driver, anybody who is looking for blood and looking for a child minus you and your children. In the name of Jesus, I said minus you and your children. I'm not wasting your time when the Lord puts a burden in my heart like this it is because he's keeping you and protecting you and opening your eyes to see certain things for some of you you have lacked discernment for some of you it is carelessness for some of you it is what's the third one ignorance for some of you abuse but for some, you've done everything right. Satan has just decided to test God's integrity in your life. Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Doors, close, help us, go away, jobs, whatever it is. People who used to like you and want to help you, they see you and they say you are such a nice person. You have a great heart. Let me see how I can help you. Let me see how I can help your family. How about those who even go through the interview for the jobs? They've called your name. They've told you everything. They said, all right, you'll hear from us in two weeks. Two weeks have become two years. In destiny, your portion does not come to you. You force it to come. Did you hear what I said? He said, right from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffered violent. And ladies and gentlemen, the spiritually violent will take it by force. Ministry will not rise till you force it to rise. Your finances will not rise. It will go up and down. He says, strong men retain wealth. You need to know how to command your portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me show you a key. I want us to pray. I don't want time to go before we pray because I have to fulfill this assignment. Let me stop here and show you a key. I don't know how many you can take, but I want to show you the keys for total deliverance. You need the key. You need the key. Knowing what God wants to do does not make it happen in your life. You must know the will of God and the strategy to bring that will to pass. Learn this. It is not enough to know what God wants to do. The knowledge of the will of God does not translate to experiencing his will. You need to know the will of God and then in addition, know the strategy. For many people, they know what God wants to do, but they do not know the strategy. They were not patient. God told you, I will do this in your life. And they just said, Amen. If, listen, 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 listen. Thank you, Jesus. God just put this in my heart. Listen, it is God's will plus God's strategy that equals God's dimension of results. God's will plus your strategy will not work. You can know the will of God. God wants me to do this. God wants me to go here. But if you don't stay, usually he does not reveal his will and his strategy at the same time. You need to have spiritual understanding to know that if you have received a blueprint of God's will, then stay until the strategy comes. Just because he wants to give you Jericho does not mean you, you invent how to defeat Jericho. You may use a sword and die like he did not direct you. It is God's will plus God's strategy. God says you should start a church. Let him give you the strategy on how to build it. God said you should start an NGO. Don't invent your strategy. God will never speak to you and not give you a strategy. It's just that sometimes the strategy does not come at the same time. You have to wait. Your marching order is when the will and the strategy arrives. Did you hear what I'm saying now? God said he will give me a house in Abuja, you may say. That is true. But by what strategy? You have to wait. God said I should relocate to Abuja and come and do ministry. But what strategy? You can hang around this city for forever and find out that doors does not open for you because the strategy is not there. God said I should expand my businesses to Europe and America, you may say. And then you just get up and start doing it in the flesh. Most times the trouble is, is not that people did not hear God. It's that they do not know that in actualizing prophetic things, the speakings of God, it is the knowledge of his will plus the grace to stay until you receive the strategy. The moment the strategy comes, the miracle is about to happen. Yes, water can be turned to wine, but by what strategy? Yes, Jordan can part, the Red Sea can part, but by what strategy? Yes, bread can remain and not be spent all through famine. But by what strategy? Yes, the dead child can come back to life. 
but by what strategy? Every miracle you see in the Bible was a combination of the will of God and a strategy. The will of God and a divine strategy. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit in partnership with the Word to reveal. Is the reason why no part of any two people, no matter how close, even if a husband and wife, their spiritual parts will not be the same. The destiny may be the same, but the strategy allocated is unique, bespoke to only you. Two people can be involved in real estate and on the same day God can tell them in one year I will establish you but the strategies differ. For someone God can use a strategy and give him an ambitious project. Set up an estate and announce it and I will send men and he will take that risk and God will honor it and that will be how God lifts him. The other person will do that and crash. For that person, his strategy will be to go and submit to a real estate company and learn and scale and grow that way. Never assume a strategy just because you heard God correctly. When he speaks, don't just know that he has said to do this. Lord, how do you intend for it to come to pass? I like Mary. How shall these things be? Not what? She knew the what. But how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man? And the strategy was revealed to her. She now agreed with the will and the strategy. Be it unto me according to your word. Apostle, God is prospering people. The strategies differ. Are we together? Now, let me give you the key. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Shalamasham preke parako sevre diselias. Keys for total deliverance from calamities. God delivers. He lifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Philippians 1.19 Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. read this scripture as loud as you can are you ready one to read for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ one more time for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit hmm. so the Bible tells us that things can turn and become for your salvation under a certain condition, not every condition. Calamities can be turned to breakthroughs, turned to triumph, turned to testimony. Therein lies the dominion of the saints, the ability to walk in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of God and turn any tragic situation, no matter how tragic, even if you are Job, there is a way out. Daniel, there is a way out. Hezekiah, there is a way out. Jonah, there is a way out. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. There is a way out. Prophesy to yourself. Oh, there is a way out. That financial problem, there is a way out. That marital problem, there is a way out. That occultic problem, there is a way out. That ministerial problem, my dear uncle, my dear father, listen to me, there is a way out. Out of shame and reproach, my dear sister, there is a way out. Even if you are Ruth, there is a way out. There is a way out. Now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. It says and I know that this shall turn for my salvation. Now give us that scripture and let me show you the keys. Notice 
He never said, this shall turn to my salvation through my prayer. No. There are times the one in the tragedy, you may not have the power to save yourself. He says, it shall turn to my salvation through the prayer of another. Through your prayer. Your prayer. Your prayer over me. Your speaking over me. The prophetic that you bring over me. I know this shall turn. I have prayed it did not turn. But there is a system God designed in the kingdom where tragedies and calamities and losses and pain are able to be turned to your salvation through your prayer. Watch this. Let me give you... Let's do three keys. One, the first key when you want total deliverance from calamities is self-examination. Write it down. Self-examination. Self-examination. Luke chapter 15 from verse 17 to 20. Popular story that I've shared here many times. My Bible says when he, the he being the prodigal son. Remember the story of the prodigal son? That guy went and wasted his life in riotous livings. The Bible said so. From friends to all kinds of people, he depleted himself until he was feeding with swine. And then the Bible says, through the power of self-examination, when he came to himself, men can come to themselves. It is within the power of men to come to themselves. You know what it means to come to yourself? Why is my life like this? The day you are ready to sit down and ask honest questions, no matter how ego stinging those questions are, you are already on the path to deliverance. Are we together? The prodigal son's father never came and met him in his mess. There was a part that the gentleman had to do and play by himself. Many people do not come out of tragedy because they have not been able to sit down and ask honest questions. Why is this ministry like this? Why is this circle of disfavor? What is wrong? I look at my life and I do not see it consistent with what God has said. What could be wrong? Let me tell you this. It is more comfortable to blame people than to sit down and ask intelligence pro-deliverance questions. There are many of us today, we are masters and experts at blaming people. God, government, friends, everybody. The power, if the prodigal son had said, God punished those prostitutes that ate my money. God punished the wicked friends that we parted away with. God punished all those people. He would, have, he would have become a pig himself. But he said, do you know what? It's not the fault of the prostitutes. I gave them room to destroy my money. It's not the fault of the bad friends. I did not have discernment to know they were evil friends. But now, no matter what you lose, do not lose sincerity. Did you hear what I said? No matter what you lose, your point of deliverance is when you become sincere with yourself. Why do I have friends who always leave me? Why do I start a business and never end? Why is it that the vision God has given me does not grow? Is God speaking to someone? Why is it that I keep having attacks? Why is our family like this? 23 people, nobody's head has been lifted. Something must be wrong. Do you know you can sit down as an individual? You can sit down as a couple. You can sit down as a ministry. You can sit down as a family. It was God's servant who said years ago the church was not growing. And they gathered the core leaders in the ministry. Rather than shouting and blaming people and giving flimsy excuses that there are too many churches or there are this and that and that. No. No. He went back and said there has to be a way out. Three days fasting and prayer. And while they were praying according to him, he said the Lord asked him to go out and he looked up and he saw a, a dark layer of cloud. And the Lord told him this is the blindfolding layer that keeps misrepresenting your ministry before people. And then he asked what should he do? And the Lord told him to rebuke it. He rebuked it. It folded like a curtain. And God gave him an instruction. Prepare a poster and write there, come and see. That was it. Hallelujah. Self-examination. 
Everybody hates me. My uncle will not help me. God will punish them. Their children will see evil. You will suffer there while he keeps rising. Self-examination. Self-examination. Let me tell you this. Self-examination is very discomforting. But that is the springboard for your deliverance. God will never bring deliverance to a hardened, arrogant, self um, self-righteousness individual no for someone God is speaking to you now your arrogance is the greatest demonic attack over your destiny not even spirits let me show you the position of self-examination this is it the ability to go on your knees no matter how great you are get down on your knees Lord you gave me 10 million out of pride and foolishness I blew it away I repent. I need you to help me. I went around borrowing money. Now I'm in debt of 100 million, 1 billion. Oh, I gave the money to somebody. That, that's a flimsy excuse. Settle down with your destiny and take responsibility. I gave a real estate agent. He ran away with the money. What do you do now? Settle down. A miracle happens when people are ready to take responsibility. The word responsibility comes from the word responsive. How many hired servants? Give us the scripture please. Look. How many hired servants as my father? And I am here. They have bread enough to spare and to perish. And I perish with hunger. Verse 18. I want to show you the power of self-examination. I will arise. I will arise. Not that I will lie down and wait for someone to come and meet me. I will arise. Men may forget me, but I will arise. I cannot redeem myself, but I can arise. And I will go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Look at what he's saying. Self-examination is a miracle. The moment you get to a point where you can take responsibility for as long as you still blame people, I can tell you, redemption will be far from you. Even salvation today, those who receive that gift are those who admit that they do not have the power to help themselves. Anybody who comes before Jesus to be saved and you put your hand in your pocket and you come and stand and you are watching and smiling as if you are coming to you are, I mean as if you died for yourself and you say Lord Jesus well interesting I mean I'm here I mean if, if you, are, you are speaking English you will not be saved with the heart man believes are we together blind Bartimeo said have mercy on me he would have said Jesus I have wicked relatives I'm not the only son of my father I've been blind here and nobody has come to comfort me the miracle of self-examination for someone God is speaking to you now why is my business down there must be a way I'm a CEO someone ran away with my money someone betrayed me someone stole my products and ran away with it my business partners ran away I know they may have the fault but I need to take responsibility Lord Jesus it depends on only me and you. You remain ever faithful. The failure is from me. I take responsibility. How come I have four children and none of them respect me? Not they went to school and learned rubbish as if you taught them well. Take responsibility. Lord, even now it is not too late. They are adults and all of them discard me. There's something I've not done well. Why are my children not becoming great? All my children are beggars. Don't move around and saying, look at all your uncles. Some are in Lagos. Some are in House of Assembly. And they will not come. You hear parents with all due respect. Discuss those things. And their arrogant children also keep joining in the conversation to recycle pain. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm trying to be truthful. Take responsibility. Hmm. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Lord, help me. I need you. I need you. Help me. I cannot help myself. Oh God, you are my God. Help me. And I will ever praise you. That's a life of self-examination. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God.
man of God, don't give excuses. You took the anointing for granted and you were careless. You took members for granted, you were careless. You insulted them and said all kinds of things. If you are tired of this church, go away. And they obeyed you and went away. Don't say there is a spirit. Before you talk of altars, go and kneel down before God and say, Lord, help my pride. Don't say it's my background, it's from my father. If I did not come from this father, I take responsibility. I've not been the best of shepherds. I've not loved the sheep. This is the attitude of genuine self-examination. The next is brokenness. Self-examination naturally graduates you. I'm showing you the keys. Many people pray and call for help, but they don't examine themselves and they are not broken enough to receive redemption. Brokenness. 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 Psalm 51 and verse 17. This is an irrefutable formula. It will bring any man out of any calamity. The sacrifices of God are not just offerings and tithes, but a broken spirit. It says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. If there is one man, I tell you, that for want of word, I will say God cannot resist in terms of paying attention to, is a broken man. No matter what has gone wrong in your life, carry what is left and cry for mercy. Carry what is left and cry for mercy. My home is broken. My life is broken. My reputation is broken. I've done things I should not do and I've destroyed myself. Carry what is left to the altar. Are we together? Carry what is left to the altar. I'm a victim of lack of discernment, you may say. I'm a victim of carelessness. I'm a victim of abuse and misuse. God gave me some money. God connected me to seasoned prophets, seasoned apostles. I used my own hand to destroy my thing. Now, Lord, I'm ready to get back. Oh, listen, in my walk with God, there, I, there, is, there, is, there is nothing more, um, uh, the, the, uh, how would I put it now? That there is nothing that moves the heart of God like a broken vessel. Let people laugh at you. Let them talk about your yesterday. Go to the horns of the altar. For as long as you remain proud in the inside that hole, you will keep digging. When you find yourself in a hole, ladies and gentlemen, calamity has struck your destiny. Run away from pride. Pride will only complicate your situation. Hallelujah. Go before the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. You gave me a good husband. I didn't have the grace to see I kept comparing him with other men, not knowing that he was a faithful man. And now, things have gone apart. Show me mercy. Not, oh God, I know I'm a beautiful man. Somebody will come by force. You talk like that, you remain in that situation. God hates pride, I tell you. I'm an intelligent person. All it takes is just for me to get one data job online and money will start coming. And heaven looks at you and says, are you not tired of foolishness? Only fools say in their hearts there is no God. Anytime you find yourself in trouble, go and lie down before God. I'm telling you, this is a formula that works. Roll on the ground before God and say, my King and my Savior, if you do not show me mercy, there is no redemption in the grave. Pray the prayer of Jonah. Pray the prayer of Hezekiah. The dead cannot praise you, O God. The poor cannot give to your work. I have made mistakes. I agree, but show me mercy. Ah, you are ready to see deliverance. It is true. I stole the money in the office. I shouldn't have, but sincerely I did. It was out of pressure. Now I've been pushed out of the job. I take responsibility. I may not be able to return to that frame again, but my God and my King and Savior, nobody will believe I am changed, but you who is my God and you see my heart, can you accept the pieces of this shattered destiny? And God says, bring it. I am not only a Savior, I am the great physician. Hallelujah. 
Have you seen surgeons perform surgery? Sometimes they remove human parts and you think that it's an abattoir to sell it. They only want to recouple it again. Maybe like a bypass for a heart surgery. It is amazing. If you have the opportunity to see that kind of thing, you will not believe that a human being can be shredded like that. They literally can saw the, the skull of a man to reach through the brain and remove a tumor and do all kinds of things. And you are watching a human being in various pieces. And just when you think the person is not alive, is not breathing, just be patient. The great physician is walking and he keeps walking. For some of you, it will not happen in one day, but just know the great physician is walking. From the moment you began your tears in sincerity, he began to walk. For some of you, from January till now, you may not see any motion physically, but imagine yourself in the ICU. The surgeon is walking, fixing your life, fixing everything. Hallelujah. Fixing it, fixing your business. While others will say, my God, this man, you used to be a millionaire, shame on you. You've gone down. What happened? Prodigal businessman. They do not know you are already negotiating with God. Can I tell you, be careful when you conclude on men. If God is still alive, there is still a future for them. Because while you are talking about the Jesus who died, he's resurrected long. He died for only three days. Hallelujah. But that prayer, take it higher for me. Let me sing that case string song. I think this is a good place to sing that song. Get the mic, come. father who is ready to be broken that mother ready to be broken that pastor ready to be broken that once great apostle prophet who is ready to be broken that once millionaire who is ready to be broken that once amazing child who declined to become a prodigal child there is always room at the cross Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there is always room at the cross for the broken, for the contrite. There is no room for the proud. There is no room for those who cannot examine themselves. Remaining in pride, I, I can figure my way out. You will keep digging and digging till you cannot be seen again. Listen. Those who know this principle are those who perpetually tremble before God. They do not even wait till things go wrong by default. The way we stand in this kingdom is to be on our knees. If you stand by standing on your feet, you are in a wrong position. Champions stand by remaining on their feet. That is the most stable position for the believer. The moment you remain on your knees, you have gained stability. You don't fall when you're on your knees. You only fall when you are standing on your feet. Self-examination. Now we get to the last and the final key. This wraps up my assignment. Prophetic intervention. The final key. Oh, Jesus. The final key 
to administering deliverance, bringing men who have found themselves in all kinds of calamities, spiritual calamities, ministerial calamities, marital calamities, health calamities. Please hear me. I speak as one sent by God. The secret to coming out of calamities is that beyond the prayer you pray for yourself. Give us Philippians chapter 1, the scripture. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. Someone will have to pray for you. This shall turn to my salvation, not through my prayers, through your prayers. Even if you are a midwife, the day you want to deliver, you must submit to another midwife. You must submit to another person. Saying you are a pregnant consultant does not give you the grace to deliver. With respect to delivery, you are a patient. You have to lie down and allow probably someone who was once your student in the university to midwife that delivery. Are we together now? Yes. The prophetic is a mysterious spiritual force that is responsible for putting a full stop. I have watched with shock and wonder how prophetic declarations with understanding can bring men out of the tragic situations. Tragic situations. One of the greatest blessings in my life Every time I have the opportunity to meet our fathers, I look forward to when they speak over my life. No. A discussion that does not concern me is not my business. I'm a young man. I'm a son relative to them, both in the spirit, in experience, and in ministry. I would not be foolish to invite myself to conversations that are beyond my level. I await with humility and patience from the residue of their covenant with God, blood dripping on the altar, even if it's five minutes, my please, please, would you place your hand and say something to my destiny? And sometimes with childlike simplicity, they bless. They bless. Hmm. Years ago, I was in a particular nation and I got to hear that one of our fathers of faith was there and I called and said, please, I have to go and greet daddy. I have to go and greet mommy. I finished from a powerful crusade. But I said, that is a man of God. He has finished. I quickly did the needful and found my way there. I had the opportunity. I went there. We exchanged pleasantries. Joked and played. But I knew that, you see, the less is blessed of the greater. From a powerful crusade. Many of us will go as colleagues. I'm a man of God too. And receive nothing and only waste your time. I got there. And he spoke over my life. Next level. Next level. Next level. This is a system God created. It's not a system he found. He created it by himself. When there was darkness, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the first thing that began the process of recreation was a prophetic word. Let there be light. Light be. Hallelujah. When you find yourself in a hole, ladies and gentlemen, beyond your personal prayer, beyond your personal altar, God designed systems within the kingdom that it would take others coming in on the strength of the prophetic advantage and their covenant with God to bring you out of it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The prophetic. Prophetic intervention is one of the mysterious ways that God brings men out. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. I want to speak to your life now. I'm telling you, I already sense a very strong anointing. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore 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 there must be a prophetic voice alas master i hope you know the young boys were also prophets in training they were already being built to be prophets but if that guy arrogantly said don't worry elisha and you have taught me the dynamics of speaking i will speak to the sea that axe head would have gone down there 
I don't know what happened that the sons of the prophet, the husband of the widow that died, Elisha was still in town. That prophet did not need to die in debt. I'm sure it was depression, mental health, embarrassment that destroyed that man and he died. The woman said, I will not make my husband's mistake. And she went to the prophet. I don't know what to do, but I take responsibility. My husband died a prophet. The, he was helping others, but he did not open up himself for another prophet to help him. Now two of my children are about to go. And Elisha said, you have done well, come. There will always be a prophetic instruction. What do you have in your house? Nothing except a cruise of oil. He said, that's enough. Since you have honored the prophetic, go back. That same house, that same vessel, borrow vessels. Do you know I believe that her ability to even get the vessels was part of the prophetic advantage. If she had gone to look for vessels, she would not find it because no one was willing to help her. When God, through the instrumentality of the prophetic, I will always want to say that there is the prophetic office, there is the gift of prophecy, and there is the operation of prophecy. There are three different things. There are people called into the office of a prophet who are not yet matured enough by training, by grace, and by release to prophesy. Just because you are called into the office of a prophet does not give you the credence to start speaking over men and nations. No. There is the gift of prophecy that can come on any believer and you perform prophetic tasks. Are we together? But you may not be a prophet. You are just a healthy believer who, have, who has opened up your spirit. Then there is the operation of the prophetic, which is a product of a sound understanding of scripture. Because the Bible has a prophetic character. And when you hide the word in your heart, it makes you prophetic. So you don't have to be a prophet. But based on the authority of scripture, you can engage it with understanding. The greatest way to manifest the prophetic is to have scripture resident within your heart and then the engracing of the spirit that enables you to manifest the prophetic. I have watched the lives of people. I wish you had time, honestly, to have watched the testimonies from our workers retreat just over the weekend in the United Kingdom. Phenomenal testimonies. Phenomenal testimonies. The testimonies we share here in Koinonia with, with every sense of humility, believe me, they are not up to 120th. The testimonies being registered, we have to work with time. The prophetic. I've had people speak over my life and even as a man of God with a bit of an experience in the things of the spirit, I have marveled and wondered at the way things have shifted in my life. Hallelujah. When it was time for a global expansion, I shared it with one of our fathers and he prayed and he said in the name of Jesus that may the Lord bring ease and bring expansion and that your voice be heard and known everywhere. You receive it by faith and that is it. For someone here, God brought you to church because if God does not help you prophetically, the trouble that is on you now the shame that will come on your life will be a memorial and God wants to step in quickly. Prophetic. Oh, 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 oh. prophetic controls 
restoration. The prophetic controls redemption. The prophetic controls deliverance. When it is administered within the boundary of scripture, it works wonders. There are some of you, you have cried unto the Lord in secret, but this deliverance will not come through your own prayers. No, but I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer in partnership with the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. In one minute, right where you are, I'd like you to begin to pray. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Is a businessman praying. Is a man of God who has lost his glory, lost the grace and the favor Parash kateba la kasiata, egra kateba 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 rakatos, skata prakata bela kata pras kata bela kata bakata. And I know that this shall turn for my salvation through your prayer. And I know that this shall turn for my salvation through your prayer. And the supply of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Let the doors open again, oh God. Let the favor come again. Let my honor return again. Let my hair grow back again. Let shame and reproach leave my destiny. Let the statement Ichabod give way. Go ahead and pray. Please Koinonia pray. Where is that grace that was once upon me? that I never had to beg for jobs. Let it return, oh God. Restore, 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 redeem, deliver. Deliver by the Spirit. The Lord will rescue us from every evil attack, the Bible says, and to bring us safely to his heavenly kingdom. Prodigal son, your father is still alive. There is still hope for the signet ring to return to your hands. Someone pray. You can pray for your loved ones. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the deepest praise to the King. Muy maca su chara Muy maca au kaka We give you the highest taken all the weakness you have taken all limitations you have taken all the sorrow you have taken away disappointment you've taken away my tears you have made them yours Worship, worship. 
flesh I cannot prevail one more minute you are pouring your heart before Jesus the deliverer the helper the restorer the redeemer his arms are not too short that it cannot save his ears are not too dull that he cannot hear. Your iniquity has brought a separation between you and him. Pray the prayer of the prodigal son. For someone you need to pray the prayer of Jonah. For someone you need to pray the prayer of Hezekiah. The prayer of Hezekiah. Only the living can praise you. The dead cannot praise you. The weak cannot praise you. The defeated cannot praise you. Arise for your name's sake in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Every once and again in scripture, you will read a very comforting rendition after tragedies. And the Lord remembered. And the Lord remembered Sarah. And the Lord remembered Hannah. And the Lord remembered Rachel. And the Lord remembered Leah. And the Lord remembered Joshua Selman. And the Lord remembered Koinonia. minute before I speak over your life I want you to mention the areas where deliverance must come for you now please mention it before God some of you you have lost your honor you have lost your reputation you have lost your integrity cry restore some of you you have lost the capacity that grace for wealth some of you you have lost certain dimensions of the operations of the spirit some of you, you have lost the gift of man. Go ahead and pray. Manasana paraka sevele sali kahasia da barantusie. Shakre gevede gede balakata praska baraka toshka pray. Skade manashalanda skavreska bara subresh. Ekriya da gede fraska balakata. Oh, restore, 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 restore. What's that our song on restoration? Take it high for me. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore. You will restore. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore you will restore. One more time. Restore. Restore. 
Hallelujah. I want you to receive the prophetic word now. When God sends us, we come in the name of the Lord. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore the honor that was lost. Restore you will restore restore everything that was lost restore my god everything that was stolen restore everything that was lost restore you will restore come Play the saxophone for me. Go ahead. I want to prophesy. I'm just walking by the Spirit. And when that happens, I'm going to begin to speak. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ let me start with those who have lost things you have lost things in the name that is above all names I'm praying now here at Koinonia by the power that raised Christ from the dead from Abuja to Zaria to UK to US to Canada across Africa Koinonia global and indeed the body of Christ I stand by the privilege of the election of grace and I decree and declare let there be a restoration now 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 tragic events that don't have an explanation from losses financial depletions the death of loved ones the loss of relationships closed doors in the name of Jesus the spirit that is behind it I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic I decree and declare that spirit gives way now 
That spirit gives way now. That spirit gives way now. Every mark upon your head, you may not see it, but it keeps calling tragedies to your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the eternal covenant, I wipe that mark from your face now. I wipe that mark from your destiny now. Hear me. Everyone you have lost favor with, lost touch with, in this place tonight, by the mercy of God, I command restoration. I command reconnection. I command restoration. I command reconnection in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray specifically for those who are in any kind of financial trouble. I've owed people before. I know what it means. The, 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 the pain only God can explain what it takes to not be able to have a sound sleep because there are bills you are owing whether institutionally whether corporately whether personally none of them is profitable i pray for you the same grace that brought the axe head from the waters in the name of jesus every financial situation you have gotten into that is leaving you now with shame and embarrassment by the power that raised Christ from the dead before the end of 2023 come out of that situation come out of that situation by the ministry of men come out of that situation by the ministry of favor come out of that situation by the ministry of wisdom come out of that situation by the ministry of mercy come out of that situation in the name of Jesus Christ for those who have lost time delay has happened in your life and the truth is that time has gone even if the constraint were taken away from your life it will take grace for you to catch up I pray for you there is speed and there is restoration these are the two mysteries that help men to redeem time the bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil and there are two spiritual forces allocated for time redemption one is called speed another is called restoration when god wants to help you you will experience both restoration brings yesterday into tomorrow speed moves you further into your tomorrow i pray for you by the force of speed and the force of restoration may time be redeemed now may time be recovered now by the forces of speed and the forces of restoration may time be redeemed now everyone here who is under any curse any diabolic manifestation the scourging tongues of men according to Job chapter 5 one of the six things that he says God would deliver us from anyone who is a victim of that I pray for you here at Koinonia in the name of Jesus be delivered from any and all evil be delivered from any and all evil now hear me some of you perhaps what you are going through is because of the pain that you cause for others maybe in your time of ignorance and you cause pain for maybe your parents or you cause pain for a man of God and in their pain or some woman some intercessor and some of them in their pain they hit their chest and made declarations to the heaven that you will not prosper some of them have died today some of them have gone away you need help I stand by the advantage of priesthood everybody who has spoken negatively maybe your biological parents maybe a man of God you ignored maybe somebody that you cause pain in their life in their family I call upon the God of all grace and mercy this night let that curse come to an end over your life let that curse come to an end over your life where they said you will die 
I prophesy leave. Where they said you will fail, I prophesy go and excel. Where they said your children would do the same negative thing, I midwife by prophecy, may your children be Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. That out of their pain, they said it will never be well with you. I call upon the God of mercy, because today you are the righteous. I say to you, it shall be well. Hezekiah, where Isaiah has told you the sickness is unto death, I stand in the name of Jesus Christ as an able minister of the New Testament and I pray for you. Live long and fulfill your days. Live long and fulfill your days. Let me prophesy to Ruth. You've lost your husband, lost your children. And you have said, do not call me all that name. Call me Mara. It is bitter. Call me all of that. And Naomi has tried to comfort you. Oh Ruth, hear the word of the Lord. There is still the second phase of your life. You are yet to meet Boaz. You are yet to become part of the lineage of Jesus. Therefore, by prophecy, I open up the new season of your life. Gideon, you may be the weakest and your father's house the weakest. But in the name of Jesus, I speak to you like the angel spoke to Gideon from tonight. Go in this your might. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be like Mary and Martha. Martha said if you had come earlier, he would, have, he would not have died. But I like what she said. Even now, even now, even now. It didn't happen in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. But even now, even now, November, I decree and declare may your eyes see your desire before December the final prophetic declaration please hear me every grace that God has deposited in this house that is not yet speaking in your life I release my faith one more time in the name of Jesus, perhaps through dishonor, perhaps through carelessness, lack of discernment, all of these things that I mentioned, you are not having it work in your life. I agree with you by faith and we stand together as a noble family of faith. I declare, may this grace rest on your life. May this grace rest on your life. Hallelujah. When Sarah bore Isaac, she named him laughter and she said that God has made me to laugh and all who hear me will laugh with me. I decree and declare by this prophetic word, let crying, mourning, weeping come to an end. Because the Bible says, weeping may endure for the night, but it says joy comes with the morning. And the Bible says he called the light day and the darkness he called night. That means when light comes, it is your day. Now that light has come, I command the night to cease. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Please give Jesus a big hand clap. Celebrate your victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you an opportunity to run to Jesus right now. We have just a minute for you. Apostle, the first deliverance I need is from a life of sin, Satan, serving the devil. You are in this place and whilst you heard me speak, the Holy Spirit spoke to you. Remember the prodigal son? The Bible says, do not harden your heart when you hear his voice. Our time is spent, but we must give you a minute. Wherever you are in this auditorium and then all the overflows, even if it's just for one person, I want to give you an opportunity to make it right. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus or make that first time decision very boldly with nobility and honor. Leave your seat and I want you to come to the front. Go ahead. Let's celebrate them as they come. Don't sit back when he calls you to come. Don't sit back when he calls you to come. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate Jesus for them as they come. 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 Come, this is a new day for you in the name of Jesus.
A few more seconds. Let's celebrate them. They are coming. Don't say we came together and I'm ashamed. No. This is a personal decision. Make this noble decision before Jesus and before his saints. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Those of you who are here, our Zaria family, our global family, and all who are connected by way of internet and television. If you want to make Jesus Lord of your life as you're listening to me, he's giving you a chance right now. As I lead these precious ones in prayer, I want you to join with all your heart, believing that as you pray, he's faithful and just. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, that God is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear ones, thank you so much for making this noble decision. Some of you are crying. There's no point being ashamed. You are before Jesus the Redeemer, the Deliverer, the Helper. May I request that you lift your right hand as a sign of honor to the King and say after me as loud as you can, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare before Jesus and his people that I am a child of God. I am saved and washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep those beautiful hands lifted as I pray. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful time. Thank you for your precious people. They have heard your word of salvation and deliverance. And they have come declaring your lordship over their lives. In the name of Jesus, based on the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you recipients of the life of God. The grace to live the victorious Christian life, it is imparted upon you today. And I declare that you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Please do well to move to my right, which will be your left. There are counselors waiting to have a word with you very quickly. 